Hey everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Knockreiner, aka that tinfoil hat guy, and this is the episode for the week starting January 7th, 2012. Oh, I mean 2013. This week's episode has a software patching theme. There's a ton of stuff to patch and I'll tell you about all of it. I'll also cover a very big zero day attack as well as a couple crazy stories at the end. Let's start by talking about the flood of patches this week. There's a number of different software products that require patching. I'm not going to go into much detail about any of them since I've wrote a lot about them on the WatchGuard Security Center. I mostly just want you to know about uh, the patches for these products and go out and get them. It all started, of course, with Microsoft Patch Day on this Tuesday. During the week, Microsoft released seven security bulletins. They fixed flaws in Windows, the .NET Framework, XML Core Services, and a very obscure server data center product that they, they sell. The most important Microsoft patch this week is probably the XML Core Service vulnerability, which affects many different uh, Windows products, including Office and the SharePoint and Groove servers as well. So definitely check out our WatchGuard Security Center post and go get those patches. Tuesday was also Adobe Patch Day, and they released updates for Reader X and for their Flash Player. And both of these are critical updates for Windows users, so definitely go patch both those platforms. On top of that, Adobe warned about a zero-day Cold Fusion vulnerability. Cold Fusion is uh, one of the web servers out there, and if you use it, you need to know that it suffers from three different zero-day vulnerabilities, which attackers are actually exploiting in the wild. I'd go check out Adobe's advisory to learn about some mitigation steps you can take to protect your server. There were also a couple browser updates this week. Google released Chrome 24, which fixed 23 vulnerabilities, 11 being very critical, and Firefox released version 18, which fixed 21 vulnerabilities. And many of these critical vulnerabilities in both the browsers can allow attackers to leverage drive-by download attacks. So if you use Chrome or Firefox, go get the updates. So to end patch news, I have an update to one of last week's stories, specifically the story about a zero a flaw in one of NVIDIA's display drivers. This week, NVIDIA released an update to their GeForce display drivers, specifically fixing that zero-day flaw. While this was kind of a local elevation of flaw that doesn't pose much risk in the wild, if you do use the popular GeForce video cards, I recommend you go out and get NVIDIA's update as soon as you can. Moving on from software updates, the biggest news by far this week was the discovery of a new zero-day Java vulnerability that affects versions of Java up until the most recent, uh, Java 7. Basically, researchers have found a new uh, Java exploit spreading in the wild. In fact, uh, many of the popular web exploit framework kits, like Black Hole, have already incorporated this Java exploit into their exploit framework. So it's a pretty dangerous flaw that attackers are already starting to leverage. There is no patch for this vulnerability yet, and Oracle hasn't really responded to this threat. Their next uh, scheduled patch day isn't till February 19th, so most people are hoping they'll release an out of cycle patch. Until then, what should you do about this Java flaw? Well, first of all, we've talked about Java quite a bit in past episodes. As I've mentioned before, if you can avoid using Java, you probably shouldn't even install it on your computer. That said, there are business critical applications that do use it, so you may have to install it on your computer. But newer versions of Java have shipped with some better security controls, controls that allow you to turn off the plug in your browser or restrict it in better ways. So if you use one of the more recent versions of Java, you may think about configuring those controls to one of their higher security settings. As an aside, in other zero-day news, 
Uh, other researchers have found a vulnerability in a pretty obscure PDF reader called Foxit. Obviously, Adobe's reader software is the most popular product people use to open PDF files. But many people have moved to Foxit thinking maybe it won't suffer as many flaws or be as targeted as Adobe's popular PDF reader. In any case, this researcher did find a zero-day vulnerability in Foxit. Basically, if an attacker can get you to open a website with a PDF file, he can gain full control of your computer, assuming you have local administrator rights. So if you do use Foxit, you might want to disable it in your browser and be wary of uh, unexpected PDF files. So let's end this update with two kind of weird and fun security related stories. One, uh, another update to the John McAfee uh, fiasco and a new story that comes to us from Japan. First, let's start with John McAfee. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I'll put links in our WatchGuard Security Center post where you can read John McAfee's latest uh, blog post in full. But during the beginning of this week, John McAfee updated his blog, uh, spinning this fantastical yarn about how he started to, to hack and infiltrate and spy on the Belize government. Uh, basically, he talked about how he had installed malware or, or a remote access Trojan software and key loggers on 70 or so cheap laptops and then offered those to government officials as free gifts. He says he also hired a bunch of different people uh, to try to get close to government officials and spy on them. And he spins this yarn about how he's, he's found that uh, the Belize government is in cahoots with some Middle Eastern uh, terrorist organizations and are helping uh, basically Hezbollah people gain access to passports that will get them into the United States. Now, while some of the technical details uh, Mr. McAfee puts on his blog are actually plausible, you know, having remote access Trojans on computers that share data with you is true, no one can really confirm this story, and it really seems like Hollywood fiction. It's quite crazy. But whether or not it's true, who knows? Uh, maybe we'll find out someday. In either case, I recommend you go to John McAfee's blog and read it. It's quite an entertaining read. The second kind of weird story has to do with a Japanese hacker that's kind of been making life miserable for Japanese uh, authorities and journalists. Basically, over the past few weeks, there's this hacker in Japan who's been playing pranks, uh, calling in bomb threats, uh, loading up viruses on people's computers, and doing some pretty nasty things. Things. Along the way, he's also been leaving some riddles and clues for authorities. Well, this week, one of those riddles uh, directed Japanese authorities and journalists to a cat wandering around a city. And once they found this cat, they found an SD card on the cat's collar, and the SD card contained uh, some code for one of the viruses this hacker is using. So again, I have no point to share in this story. It's just a weird little case that's happening. Uh, it is showing that hacking is getting into the zeitgeist of the modern culture. Some of the seemingly fictional tales we only expect to see in the movies seem to be filtering down to the real world. It's, it's kind of weird and strange. Anyways, if you want to know more about this Japanese hacker and his cat-based prank, make sure to check out the reference section of this video blog post. Well, that finishes up yet another episode. I hope you found it enjoyable. And as far as some housekeeping, if there's any XTM appliance customers out there, do know this week we released XTM firmware 11.7 as well as WSM 11.7. And this new update contains a ton of new useful features. I highly recommend you go check it out if you use our appliances. Also, speaking of the next few weeks of episodes, over the next two weeks I'll be traveling in uh, Asia and and Europe. I'll continue to try to make my weekly videos, but they may be much shorter, have a little less editing, and they may also arrive at strange times, either a bit earlier than normal or a bit later than normal, depending on my travels. So keep a lookout for upcoming episodes, but know they're not going to come at the same time. And don't forget, if you want more regular security stories, watch our WatchGuard Security Center blog, and you can also follow my and WatchGuard's Twitter alias. I'm at SecAdept, and WatchGuard is at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.